Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and early this morning here, Nintendo dropped all of their latest financial data for quarter one of their current fiscal year, running from April through June 30th, and my lord, guys, we spent a lot of time lately talking about that next generation system, but... We should spend a lot more time talking about the current generation system because Nintendo Switch just had its best first quarter of all time. And yes, it's largely thanks to, well, that Zelda game. But you know what? Don't believe me. Let's hop right into it. So this is their financial results explanatory material. We're not going to go through the raw data. We're going to go through their explanatory material because it does a better job explaining what we're actually trying to understand. And so you see the first quarter of the fiscal year ending March of 2024. Uh, scrolling on down here, it says the consolidated financial results and outlook. Here we get our first little bit of data here looking over the consolidated results. And there's a, a few things to note here. Obviously, the net sales, the operating profit, the ordinary profit, the net profit, net profit ratio. What you want to notice over here is the comparison to quarter one of fiscal year 23. When you look over here, everything plus 50%, plus 82, plus 7, plus 52, plus 52, and plus 0.5 of a percent. This is a, just literally a net massive gain across the board for Nintendo year over year. And it points it over here. We're saying year on year net sales for the first quarter of the fiscal increased by 50% to 40 461.3 billion yen etc 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 there let's just put it this way nintendo's dominating okay this is just the raw numbers at the end of the day but let's get into why they're dominating so first off we have the consolidated sales data here split up into a pie chart what i like about this pie chart is says the portion of sales outside of japan is 80 percent, and this really breaks it down for you if you ever were wondering how, where does nintendo sell the most stuff well, Japan makes up 20% of their sales, but the Americas, this is North and South America, make up 44.6%. Europe makes up 22.9%, and the rest of the world makes up 12.5%. That's the biggest thing uh, to get here. You can also see that Nintendo's been making a smidge of profit on playing cards, etc. Uh, I think this might just be... I don't know, maybe Legos or something. But anyways, they are making a smidge of profit and obviously a massive increase. So there is that dedicated video game platform, mobile IP related income, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Um, what's interesting here is in the mobile IP and related business, overall sales rose 190.1% year on year, 31.8 billion yen, bolstered by an increase in income from royalties and income from the visual content related to the Super Mario Bros. movie. So you're seeing the first impact of the Mario Bros. movie right now. Here now, here we get to our gross profit again, up 52.3 percent. Uh, so that's really, really good. As we get down in here, we see some information on this. Although the proportion of harbor sales declined and the proportion of first party software sales increased, our gross profit margin remained the same level year on year. This was due in part to the lower proportion of digital sales and Nintendo Switch OLED model, which has a lower profit margin, and the other models of the Switch family systems accounting for a greater percentage of harbor sales. So, what they're saying is even though all the numbers look positive in many sense, you're still seeing some negatives in here, and that's because digital sales are down, and uh, like percentage-wise, and the OLED sales are up, but OLED doesn't make as much profit as their other platforms, so that's making up that discrepancy. As we go down in here, selling and administrative expenses, this is just how much it costs to run the company, and it's pretty, uh, pretty standard here. You are seeing an increase here in the research and development expenses. This is something I always like to point out because this is the kind of money Nintendo's investing in future video games and also investing in future hardware. So it's always, you know, when you start to see these increases, and again, we've seen a lot of them recently, it tends to indicate Nintendo has something cooking. We know what they have cooking. We know there's a device coming, but I just wanted to point that out. Uh, the rest of those numbers don't matter too much to us, but we do have a look at their ordinary profit and their net profit. This is obviously the most important part. Their net profit, uh, while up, the profit ratio is only up half a percentage point. So yeah, they're making a lot more money, but the ratio changes because of different factors uh, that only Nintendo could really fully explain. But now we got to go down into some of the more interesting stuff here. So we have our consolidated financial forecast showing their operating profit and their net profit and showing a little bit of a decrease. And again, they talked about this decrease actually just being because of 
you know, the Switch OLED uh, and obviously the digital sale difference. But we'll get into this in a moment because I, I want to point out that despite this, Nintendo's having a first quarter. So I, I said they were having an amazing first quarter, one of the best ones ever. That doesn't mean that that's how the numbers are always going to play out because when it comes to pure profitability, there are other ways to make more profit while selling less. Now, the first quarter of the fiscal year, both sales and profits were notably large for a first quarter, mainly due to the concurrent releases of the Super Mario Bros. movie and Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, basically, they dominated. Those two things carried Nintendo. So getting to our business highlights, and now the fun begins. We have the sales status of the Nintendo Switch, which is sell-in. Now, notably, sell-in does not mean sold to consumer. That is what sell-through means, and we're going to see that number later. But you're going to see a big number jumping out right now, 18 0.51 million units of Tears of the Kingdom have been sold in through June 30th. Again, the difference is, for Nintendo's purposes, selling is a sale. Sell through is what a lot of us view as sales. So sell in is, this is what they have sold to retailers, and then sell through is what we have actually purchased. Now, why does this matter, and why does Nintendo care more about sell-in? Because sell-in means Nintendo has already made their money on 18.51 million. So that just means there's, you know, as we're going to find out later, there's, it's actually more like 15 million that have actually sold through. That's because there's a few million sitting on store shelves worldwide at the end of June. Those are probably gone by now. But the point is that sell-in is what Nintendo cares the most about. And that's 18.51 million, which is just earth-shattering. Uh, you can also see the same thing here with hardware, 3.91 million, which is ahead of last year. And you can see the massive increase here with the Switch OLED model compared to a year ago at 86%. Um, and that's probably due to the Zelda Special Edition OLED, if I had to really just stick a number on. Why the hell is the OLED increasing that much? Well, there was a Special Edition Zelda one. You see those Zelda sales. That's insane. The only other million unit seller during the fiscal quarter was actually Mario Kart 8 Deluxe of 1.67 million units. We're actually going to give a look at the full top 10 software sales update here in a little bit. So they had 2 million sellers in that time period. And then you can see the quarterly trends here. Uh, obviously, you always see this peak in Q3. Q3 is always the biggest because that is the holiday season uh but yeah this is really really good and you can see this increase in overall switch sales in comparison to quarter one of fiscal year 2023 so it says unit sales for the entire switch family of systems rose by 13.9 percent year on year the new title legend of Zelda Tears of the kingdom sold 18.5 million units in the quarter which not only significantly increased software unit sales but also drove hardware sales thanks in part to the theatrical release of the mario bros movie and promotions tied to that movie sales of mario kart 8 deluxe and other mario related titles also posted solid sales now here we're seeing nintendo hardware sell through and annual playing users so there's a couple like they show a couple bar graphs here some big things to note are this number here this is the annual playing users so what this means is people who have logged into their switch at least one time in the last year and played a game is at 116 million that is damn all you could really say is damn 116 million active users is an insane number. If you think about it, there's only 130 million switches sold. Yeah, that is that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, anyways, you can obviously see the global sell through and the increase in the OLED sales here. Obviously, holiday period, and then you know, hey. It is what it is. Uh, so, so far, we have been talking about sell-in or unit sales by Nintendo Group, its business partners. Now, let's turn the discussion to sell-through, which is the number of units purchased by consumers and to the number of number of costs that have opened software on Nintendo Switch. The graph on the left, which we showed up here, that's this graph right here, uh, shows global hardware sell-through from April through June. Global hardware sell-through in the first quarter increased compared to the same quarter last fiscal year, helped by sales of the Nintendo Switch OLED model, including the Nintendo Switch OLED model Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Edition, which launched at the end of April. On a region-by-region -region basis, sale sell-in declined in Europe and the Americas compared to the same period last fiscal year, but sell-through increased for all regions, including Europe and the Americas. So basically, they shipped more units last year, but they sold through more units this year. Again, this is where you play with the numbers. Technically, that means they made more money last year than this year. But yeah, you just 
Again, numbers are fun, aren't they? And the way you can twist them to be negative or positive. Anyways, the graph on the right shows the trend in the number of annual player playing users for Nintendo Switch. Number of annual playing users from July 2022 to June 2023 was the highest ever, exceeding 116 million. And this is a big key number for Nintendo because that's how that's how many active users they have. That that's you wonder why the software continues to sell. That is insane. Scrolling down, Nintendo's first party software sell through. This is where they show you the 15.7 million uh, units in eight weeks. And again, Nintendo has made their money in 18.51, but this is how many consumers technically bought it. I'm sure the rest have been sold by now, but it's just good to know. Now, so now let's move on to a discussion of sell through a first party software. Global sell through a first party software this quarter reached the highest level for a first quarter since the launch of Nintendo Switch. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which released on May 12th, has made a major contribution. We're about to drop a really neat stat here, all right, in which we see widespread adoption in Nintendo Switch hardware and continued play in games by many consumers. Sell through of this one title, so just Tears of the Kingdom, constitutes approximately half of the first party software sold this fiscal year. Consumers who played the previous entry, Breath of the Wild, have been the primary driver. But as the weeks have passed, we have seen that a growing percentage of purchases are being made by consumers who have not yet played that title. That's right. A growing number of people are buying Tears of the Kingdom who never played Breath of the Wild. That's insane. And obviously, half of all first-party software sold was Zelda. I can believe it. All right. Uh, scrolling on down here, we're seeing the digital sales. And this is where you're seeing a decrease that Nintendo mentioned earlier, that the percentage of digital sales is down. Only 47.3% of all software sales were digital when you compare to uh, fiscal year of, of, of uh, what is it, uh, 2023, uh, you can see here 53%. So we see a roughly 6% decline year over year. So for those of you that love physical, that's probably a good sign. Also, Zelda was probably the big driver. I got a feeling a lot of Zelda physical sold compared to digital. Uh, so that was probably the big difference here. And it just shows examples of digital copies of games, Mario Kart, etc., Fire Emblem Engage, all of that. Let's get to what they say down here. Digital sales during the first quarter increased by 35.9% year on year to 119 billion yen and accounted for 47.3% of total software sales for our dedicated video game platform. Now, growth, they're talking about overall profit because while a smaller percentage was sold, a larger amount of total games was sold. See, balancing act. This is what they teach you when you take a statistics class. Very easy to manipulate statistics to say negative or positive things. Anyway, several factors contributed to the increase in digital sales and depreciation of the yen in foreign exchange markets increased the sale amounts when converted to yen. In addition, the downloadable versions of packaged software for Nintendo Switch, like the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, sold well, and sales related to Nintendo Switch Online increased. On the other hand, the sales of packaged version of Tears of the Kingdom were also strong, resulting in a lower overall digital sales ratio compared to the same period last fiscal year. So there you go. They're basically saying, hey, we sold more physically of Tears of the Kingdom than we did digitally. That's basically the big contributing factor on why it's down by 6% in terms of the digital to physical sales split. Um, and then they go over these example of announced products for 2023. Obviously, we already have Pikmin 4, but a nice reminder, we got, what is this, uh, Detective Pikachu 2 or whatever coming out here on October 6th. Then we have uh, Mario Bros. Wonder on October 20th, November 3rd. Uh, we have the WarioWare Move It. And we can't forget about November 17th, the Super Mario RPG. We still have the Wave 6 of the DLC to come. And then they have uh, Part 1 and Part 2 planned for release in the winter. This is a Scarlet and Violet DLC. So the Nintendo products are already announced for release in 2023. We don't need to go back over um, all of this list because this is just exactly what we talked about. Now, when we come down here, we get some information on the Mario movie. So it says the Super Mario Bros. movie box office went to 168 Point one million viewers at the box office, which is insane. That put the revenue at one point three four nine billion dollars, the highest ever for an original film based on a video game, and the second highest for an animated film. Viewed by people of all ages, not only in Japan, North America, Europe, and Australia, but also in South America and Asia. And they expanded outside the dedicated video game platform business to create new opportunities to encounter Nintendo YP, reinvigorating their overall 
business. Uh, so that is just really, really awesome. And this is just kind of recapping everything we just said. Uh, so it said the heightened consumer interest in Mario is having a positive effect on a wide range of fields, including growing sales of Mario related titles and sales of smart device apps and merchandise. And by expanding the IP outside of areas dedicated video game platform, we create new opportunities for consumers to encounter Nintendo IP. And this does invigorate the overall business. And they're going to continue to basically do that moving forward so they're going to be having more and more movies essentially um now we get to the million seller first party titles here we already went over this earlier it's legend of zelda and mario Kart 8 deluxe for the quarter uh there's one big thing i still want to show you in this particular file and that is this thing right is this the one nope uh nope it is hold on here it is uh, I don't know how well you guys can see this. So this just tells you all the games that are already announced, right? So we went through over most of them. We got to add like Luigi's Mansion and Metroid Prime 4 in. Also, we got to add this title. I know the text is really small for you guys. So I'm just going to read it here. It says Princess Peach will star as the main character in a brand new game temporary title. That's right. At the moment, the official title of that Peach game is... Princess Peach will star as the main character in a brand new game. I've never seen Nintendo list a game like that. Yeah, we get lots of temporary titles. But that's the temporary title for the Peach game. Princess Peach will star as the main character in a brand new game. I don't know. I find it funny. Maybe it's really not that funny, but it is to me. Now, I wanted to get into this, and of note, Nintendo Switch itself is at 129.5 million units, but what I really wanted to get down to is into the top 10 selling software in the sales update. So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is now at 55.46 million units. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons is at 42.79 million units. Super Smash Bros. is now at 31.77 million. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has now officially crossed 30 million on just the Nintendo Switch at 30.65 million. Mario Odyssey is in there at 26.44 million. Pokemon Sword and Shield is sitting pretty at 25.92 million. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet are at 22.6 million. And by the way, very, very close. The next financial update should have this officially as the third best selling Pokemon game of all time. And only really time is going to tell if it could pass Pokemon Sword and Shield. Super Mario Party is at 19.39 million. There's Tears of the Kingdom chiming in. Uh, at 18.51, and then we have new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe at 16.17. By the way, people are wondering what the other Mario Party game is. It did cross 10 million in total sales, so Mario Party Superstars. Obviously, that's about half the sales of Super Mario Party, but that does make it the second best-selling game in the franchise, while Super Mario Party is the best-selling Mario Party game of all time. So what did we learn from all this? A whole lot of sales data. Nintendo is doing really, really well. Of course, that's what happens when you drop a big kahuna game like Zelda. Now, some people, uh, analysts, have gone out there and said that Nintendo needs to change their projections and make them go higher. And Nintendo did have a note in the one file I didn't show you where they said they are not changing their projections. And I think I understand why. They knew Zelda was going to do numbers. They knew it was going to do astronomical numbers. They probably had these numbers already projected into their sales data so i don't know that nintendo is surprised that they had this amazing first quarter i think they just know nothing else this fiscal year is coming out that is as important as this game i know mario wonder could do some good sales but i don't know that that's going to push units so i do feel that they just knew this zelda period was going to be special and they're not changing their projections on sales because they just know nothing's going to do what zelda just said they don't have another game that massive coming out between now and the end of the fiscal year so they're just keeping their projections where they are because the switch is performing as expected but 18.51 million can you believe it man it is going to i don't want to say it but I, by the end of this fiscal year tears of the kingdom has a chance to become the best selling zelda game of all time i just want you to let that sink into your noggin for a moment all right guys that's all i got for you thank you so much for being here if you enjoyed all this crazy data and the numbers and all that i'd appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel and i'll catch you in the next video